Hello and welcome everybody to today's webinar and our first photopolymer webinar in BSS 3D printing solution. And we are going today to explore photopolymer for 3D printing. Thank you for watching. My name is Arnaud Guedou and I am the director for the business line photopolymer here at BSF 3D printing solution. And I'm presenting you today this webinar. So the purpose and the goal of this first webinar about photoprimer is to give you a brief overview of photoprimer in the uh, 3D printing industry and to give you the basics of the different technologies, the, the hardware, the listening them, and, uh, and give a short explanation of their core difference and the, the principle, but also look at the chemistry of the photoprimer, what differentiate them from the uh, well-known engineering plastics, and then we will finish with a short overview of the material portfolio and the market of these different photopolymers. So uh, let's start now with, uh, with a short history of the photopolymers for uh, 3D printers that we have seen over the last years. So everything started, in fact, in 1986 when the American Chuck Earl has patented his first, uh, the first uh, photopolymer 3D system, the 3D printers that was called at that time an SLA system and was based on a laser and a UV laser uh, polymerizing uh, a resin. And then from that, he has started this first company, uh, 3D Systems in the US. And then we had to wait for quite a while, for 13 years exactly, to see a new solutions coming up. And indeed, in 1997, the uh, company Object was founded in Israel and then they developed a new kind of printer uh, using inkjet print head, very similar to what we can see uh, in the 2D inkjet uh, industry. And then instead of using an ink, using a photopolymer. Then just few years after, in around uh, 22, so 2002, uh, a German-based company called Envision Tech uh, developed a new printer uh, based on, uh, on a new solution, uh, new imaging systems, and they were using a, a beamer, a video projector to project you know, this image on the, on the, on the, on the material and, and polymerize it. This was the first DLP system, DLP-based systems, and then we still have to wait for quite a while until uh, 2013 when uh, we, we have seen the company Massivit, uh, again a company from Israel, coming with a new solution to polymerize by extruding uh, a photopolymer and then polymerizing with a light. And then just few years after, in 2015, um, the, light, the lightest innovation uh, was, is coming from a, from a company in UK called Photocentric that developed uh, a system uh, using uh, now not anymore DLP uh, as an imaging system, but using LCD screens as a light source. So we have uh, on the hardware side, a wide, uh, a wide diversity of solutions that are overlapping uh, on some uh, on some aspect, but are also complementar and have uh, each of them their own strengths, and we'll see that a little bit uh, deeper later. Of course, the hardware without a material will never make any parts. So it's important at this point to understand the basics of the polymers and in which category photopolymers are, photopolymers, sorry, are fitting in. Indeed, in these two uh, there is two types of polymers, uh, the thermoplastic and the thermoset polymers. Let's see the main characteristics of these two categories. First, let's see uh, the well-known uh, thermoplastic. So the uh, thermoplastics are materials that are softened when heated and then become more fluid uh, as additional heat is applied. Thanks to that, you know, we can shape these thermoplastics when uh, we are planning heat and then freeze them, freeze the shape uh, by cooling them down uh, to room temperature. For thermosets, it's different. When we apply uh, a, source of, uh, a source of energy uh, to this thermoset uh, that we call, you know, this process, the, the curing process, the polymers molecule then cross-link. To, uh, to form an irreversible chemical bonds. So this means crossing, this we, we are linking these 
molecule together. Applying additional energy, as heat, for instance, will never solve them, uh, but can result of burning them. So the shape uh, needs to be made then during the curing process. So to use a, a standard image for that, you know, we can compare the thermoplastic as butter and the th thermoset as, as, as egg. Indeed, the butter at room temperature is solid. And then if it is, it softens and then we can shape it. If we cool it uh, down, then it keeps the shape. Whereas an egg is liquid at room temperature, then when we eat it, eat it, if we apply it, it solidify. But then, you know, if we cool it down, it stays as it is. And if we apply more heat, it's not going to melt again. It's just going to burn. So photopolymer is a liquid that when we apply light to solidify and then for then uh, photopolymers are thermoset. We'll see a little bit further, a little bit uh, later, more uh, about you know the formulation of this photopolymer. But for the moment, let's come back to the hardware and their basic principle. Uh, and, the, and the basic principle. Uh, 3D printing with a photopolymer consists uh, of making an object layer by layer by polymerizing with a specific light source, uh, a thin layer of photopolymer according to the shape of the final parts. Once the layer is cured, then uh, the build platform moves by one layer, either it goes up or go, go, goes down. So there is uh, two way uh, to, uh, to, uh, to 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 move the, the the platform. Either it goes in down, and I said, oh, it's going up. So that's the bottom up or the top the top down. So we can divide the uh, the uh, the hardware solution in two categories. There is the VAT based systems and the non VAT based systems. In the first category, the machine are using a VAT that behave a little bit like a reservoir of resin during the build. Uh, its size depends, of course, of the size of the build platform, but also if the system is top-down or bottom-up. Indeed, for top-down, as the build platform goes down into the vat, the vat needs to be bigger than for the other systems. In this first category, uh, the systems are very different, are using different uh, light source or imaging systems you want to polymerize the resin. So it can be either an SLA using you know, uh, a laser, or this can be a DLP system using a video projector. So using you know, the well-known beamer that we have uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in, the, in the movie theaters, projecting this mask of small, tiny pixels on the resin and project, so making the resin, the, all the layers in once. Or you know the last uh, the last uh, systems are using and the newest it's the newest uh, systems are using uh, as a mask you know this LCD screens that we are using for iPad for tablet for mobile phone or for TV screens and projecting this mask onto the resin and polymerizing only where the pixels are are, are, are on. So uh, for the SLS systems, you know the, the the strength of this system is to to give us the opportunity to have very high accurate parts, and uh, usually it's our big machines, and so it has a very high uh, surface to polymerize and give us the opportunity to redo a large part, um, and then make a very nice uh, surface finishing. Uh, but the downside of that, you no, know, as we are using a single point to cure the resin. It has to go through all the different area to polymerize, and then you know the speed can be a little bit low, and then we have a long processing of uh, of recoating, and then we have a very limited choice of material. For the DLP and the bit platform is uh, is uh, is very small. It's limited to the to the size of the the image projected, uh, but there you know uh, we can have a high density of energy. We are polymerizing the all the the, the surface in once. Uh, and then we have a very effective uh, imaging uh, recording system, uh, recording um, process. So that's uh, that helps to 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 really have a, a fast and productive systems. And then as we are using very tiny pixels, we can have a very high accuracy. 
And then, uh, thanks to the wavelengths that are using, and then this uh, very small vat, you know, we have a wide portfolio of materials that we can use, and a very, uh, very uh, affordable solution. For the uh, LCD systems, it's very similar to what we can see with the DLP systems, by, because we are projecting uh, on the surface uh, a full mask, a uh, full image of, of tiny pixels. Um, but then, you know, as I see, as I told you, you know, we can use you know, this, uh, this uh, LCD screens uh, used for TV, so we can have very high, uh, a very uh, big uh, surface, so big, uh, big uh, build envelope, um, and uh, and also uh, by uh, that, you know, if we need uh, a lot of parts, we can really produce this part in a very short time, and so we have high productivity, and then as this. Um, LCD screens are uh, a commodity. Uh, this means the cost of these um, imaging systems are very low, and then we have very affordable machines. Very similar to the DLP, we can have a broad material portfolio there. Some of the limitation there, it's a new technology. So this means that there is uh, still uh, uh, new technology coming uh, all the time, and then uh, there is a lot of work ongoing there, and then there is not so much uh, experience on that, even if uh, we see some systems today that are really uh, promising. And then, as we are using these big uh, vats, you know, we can have some limitation on the formulation with the viscosity that we can use. Um, in the second category, so the, the not uh, vat-based systems, the, uh, the layer is directly printed on the platform uh, or on the previous layer by adding a resin only when material is needed, and uh, and then immediately curing it. Um, so uh, with a, with a curing it with a with a very powerful light source as a lamp or an LED. So there is two different ways to add uh, the material, either by using uh, an inkjet printhead and uh, injecting micro droplets of photopolymer, uh, very similar to to the to the uh, to the 2D uh, inject printing uh, systems or printers, uh, or the second solution is to extrude uh, a photopolymer gel and uh, and curing it immediately uh, immediately after. So something this is quite similar to the uh, filament uh, 3D printers, but you know much fa faster because we don't have this uh, this limitation of the temperature. So for the uh, photopolymer jetting, so as I said, you know, we are jetting, uh, jetting uh, the material through uh, print heads. So this gives you know, uh, the opportunity to have very accurate and very high resolution, very smooth surface and thin layers. You know, we have very tiny layers of something like 16 microns, for example. And the very uh, big differentiator of this technology, this gives the opportunity to have multi-materials and color parts in one uh, in one part and, and 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 one job, so there is also no uh, no post curing. You know uh, the part is cure. Each droplets are cured during the process, so there is no liquid residue to remove. Um, and uh, but the the limitation of this process is that as we have these tiny uh, nozzles and uh, that the material needs to go through, we have limitation of the viscosity, and this has impact of the mechanical properties that we can can have. And then the other thing is that uh, as soon as we have uh, an angle on the path, then you know this needs to be supported, and then uh, this process is using a lot of material for support, and then that we are going to lose it after. So it's a cost. Uh, for the uh, extrusion, um, then uh, these are systems which can really make huge parts, uh, and uh, so I invite you to look at what Massivit uh, can do uh, with that. So huge parts, uh, and then very, very big speed. Um, that, uh, as you know, we are curing the, pros the, 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 the gel while it's extruding, so then there is less support to use. There is also no post curing for that because there is no liquid residue. Uh, downside of that is that uh, the resolution is low. Uh, it makes thick layers, uh, so that's uh, that's uh, not something that we are going to use for a small, tiny parts, but for a huge, massive parts, it's something that is going to be unbeatable. So let us now uh, compare the, 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 the photopolymer 3D printers with uh, the other uh, technologies used uh, for thermal plastics. Um, and, uh, and then for, for a long time, the, the, the photopolymers uh, 3D printers were the most expensive one. And, 
and uh, and also very expensive to maintain. Uh, mainly to the due to the big to the solution that there was at that time, it was the big SLS systems. Um, when the DLP systems came, uh, we have seen then uh, smaller systems and and much cheaper. Uh, and then with the new LCD systems uh, from companies like Photocentric, for example, we can even uh, find systems cheaper than uh, the uh, FFF, the filament uh, 3D printers. And until today, the uh, photopolymer systems are the ones that are offering the uh, highest resolution, the highest productivity, the, the, the best surface quality and the biggest build envelope for the best price. Um, this last year, uh, with the material volume uh, used uh, that increased, the price of this material uh, decreased significantly. It was common in the past to see materials price around 200 euro a kilogram a few years ago. And, and, and today, uh, at volume, it's possible to get material for less than 40 euro a kilogram. Um, and thanks to that, to all this, you know, we have uh, the best cost per parts today with these photopolymer solutions. Uh, but there are still two limitations uh, for, for these uh, this, uh, solutions, uh, which are the post process and the support removal. Indeed, uh, for the VAT-based uh, systems, uh, it still needed to wash the non-cure uh, resin, so the liquid uh, that is uh, on, on, on the parts. And, uh, and then, you know, post-cure the parts after the cleaning. Uh, but, you know, there is more and more automatic solution that exist and simplify the process and make the, trans the process transparent. Uh, regarding the support, uh, we also have seen a lot of improvement uh, this uh, recently uh, to either make the, 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 the support soluble, that's what we can see you know, on the uh, jetting system, for example, and then you know, we can dissolve uh, easily all these uh, supports, and then you have a part which is really, really nice. Or you know, also uh, some new uh, way, new strategy to, 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 to build support to to design support with very, very tiny, very, very fine uh, structures that make them easy to break uh, break out. And, uh, and then even you know, uh, using some automatic uh, support removal uh, process and then also make the, the process uh, absolutely uh, transparent. Um, so let's now come back to the, into the, the, the the core, uh, the core of the solution, so, so the materials. So this material chemistry has, uh, let's say, evolved uh, or improved over the last 30 years. If we... And, um, and uh, everything starts at the beginning with 100% uh, accurate formulation. And then we, uh, it was used because it was very fast curing materials. It, it was really using, uh, requiring a minimum of uh, post curing of, uh, uh, of the material because the main of the material we already uh, cured in the process. It has low color, very, can be very transparent uh, part, but it was really brittle. Uh, it makes also some curing uh, inhibition on the surface and then have some, uh, some issue with the surface. And then uh, the, the, but the, and the main the downside was the, the shrinkage and the warp edge. The accolades really shrink and curl a lot, making a lot of defor uh, deformation. And, uh, and then from that, uh, we have seen a, an evolution of this formulation is that, you know, by reducing the amount of accolade into the formulation and using epoxy to compensate. So that's what was really used in the big SLS system, or is still used in the big SLS systems. Uh, so then, you know, we can, as, as there was less accurate, uh, accurate resin use or accurate material use, you know, then there is less cur curling, less shrinkage, and then uh, a better, uh, better, uh, better accuracy. Um, and then using this, uh, this can create a better dimen uh, dimensional stability. Problem is that you know uh, this uh, has no long-term stability of the binacle properties. It requires long post-curing because the epoxy has a very long uh, curing time, and uh, and that's uh, that's a very uh, downside. From that, you know, we see recently some new formulations uh, popping up, uh, which are based on the IT urethane. Uh, which really bring a high toughness tough thanks to this uh, core ingredient into it, which are the oligomers. Uh, and then we can have, really have a very wide range of hardness, 
like scratch resistance, impact resistance. It's, uh, it's very easy inside to really disperse pigment, to, to color them, to have black materials, for instance. Um, it's, uh, it's also uh, shows, demonstrate very long and stable uh, mechanical properties, fast curing process, and then can be used in very different wavelengths and different uh, printers. Um, downside is that you know sometimes the viscosity can be a little bit higher, or it's not it can be his uh, has a viscosity which are higher than the uh, standard accurate chemistry, and we still need to to educate the the, the world of what this can uh, can can achieve. Um, if we if we look a little bit deeper uh, at this uh, reactive urethane uh, formulation, we can see that very they are made. Uh, out of three different uh, components, a monomer, uh, an oligomer, and a photon initiator. Uh, we have seen earlier that the, uh, the, 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 the photopolymers is uh, a thermoset. So this means that we have a polymer molecule that crosslink. Um, so here, our, our polymer is called oligomer. So that's where I know it comes really the mechanical properties. And then uh, by uh, Adding light, uh, you know, the, 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 we are going to cross-link these polymers uh, with the uh, with the monomer. So, uh, so from that you can see that you know by playing with the oligomer, with the monomer, uh, the, 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 the photon initiator and the light source, we can have a very very versatile. Uh, we can have very, very versatile mechanical properties, a very wide uh, portfolio of material. And in fact, if you look a little deeper, what we are doing is not really having, we are not really having a 3D printers, but we have a chemical reactor where we are doing a locally uh, a chemical reaction, creating locally the end polymer, uh, and then help us to customize everything we want. And then, you know, we are really achieving the final properties when everything, uh, every, Free material has been uh, has been polymerized, and then uh, that's why you know, in some of the process we need to have this uh, post curing um, this post curing uh, process. So by choosing uh, the right component uh, uh, and the, the right oligomer and monomer, or even better, you know if we can uh, really develop uh, this co component, this oligomers and this monomers for this 3D printing industry. But that there is just few companies in the world which are able to do it as 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 we uh, in BSF. Um, we see that we can have a very wide range of uh, mechanical properties, and uh, and then from that we can build up a very wide uh, portfolio of materials. Uh, then a typical material of engineering grade uh, can be or is composed of, of different products. You know, we have usually elastic materials that can can have, have very long elongation at break, you know, that are very similar to silicone, let's say. Um, and then uh, that can be used in application like a watch band, uh, ceiling application, and, and, and so on, gaskets. Um, and then we have also the elastomeric materials, uh, let's, let's say, you know, that have, you know, an elongation break a little bit lower than the elastic one, but you have a very high rebound. Uh, and then that's uh, usually a uh, material that we are using uh, in application like uh, shoe uh, midsole and or cushioning application. Um, then you know, if we look a little bit higher in the, uh, in the rigidity, then we have all these iron pipe materials, which have properties, if we can say that similar to engineering plastic like PE, PP and ABS, but you know, with the strengths that are not going to become soft, softer uh, with the temperature increase, increasing, so very stable. Um, and then after we have the high-end product, so very rigid uh, product, you know, that can lead to a high temperature uh, that you know, we can use for underhood application for, for, for also printing molds to inject plastics or for wind tunnel application. Um, for dental, some application required, of course, uh, some good mechanical properties, but uh, then we are playing with over characteristics and with over components to achieve over properties on the top of the mechanical properties, which are the uh, different biocompatibility um, and, and stability of the product in, in, in different condition. Um, so, so for for material for dental, no, we usually uh, can divide them in three different categories the non-medical grade, the medical grade class one, and the medical grade class 2A. That's how it is today. 
Uh, so for the for the non-medical, we have materials that can be used for thermal forming of clear liners, for models for thermal forming, for stone models, for autonautic models, and then do some soft material for for mimicking gengiva, and then uh, use for gengiva mask. For the class one product, uh, main application are for the impression trays, surgical guides, or you know for in indirect bonding trays. But we will go deeper that into another seminar. And then we have the class 2A that are product that can stay in the mouth uh, for uh, for long term for more than 30 days. So this is the, the soft splint, the hard splint, and the temporaries and and the, the, the dentures. Um, so now that you are a little bit more familiar with all of this machine and material, so let's have a quick look at the market and uh, looking at these uh, 2018 numbers from the World Health Report. So we can see there that the, the photo premier material uh, um, market uh, is still uh, the, the biggest, uh, uh, it's, uh, is the biggest uh, revenue in 3D printing uh, until now. And that represents around the one third of the total revenue and they, they are used all across uh, the different uh, industry, uh, even if you know, the motor vehicle, business machine, aerospace, consumer goods, uh, and dental are the industry that are using them uh, the, the most. So this market is also a very dynamic uh, market and has a, a yearly growth rate of approximately 20%. And uh, a lot of innovation uh, happen every every year uh, and all and these last years, especially on photopolymers. On hardware, as you know, we have seen some new uh, operation, op new process, not process, new way to operate the process, new new recoating system, I would say, solutions, and then you know, give us the opportunity to have very fast printing solution with the continuous printing, as Carbon 3D did, for example, uh, and some others now, um, and uh, or large frame LCD printers uh, like uh, like Photocentric is doing that with uh, unbeatable cost and high productivity and we also have seen uh, very very good uh, materials uh, showing on the industry with fantastic mechanical properties and very very good stability uh, over time um, and then the material uh, that today are used to mass product uh, to max produce sorry um, the uh, shoe midsole uh, for for Adidas so I hope you enjoy this uh, first webinar and introduction on photoprimers, and I invite you to follow us and participate to our next webinar, video tutorials and over um, video, uh, where we will make a deep dive on the different topics that we have seen today. And uh, as the hardware technology, the uh, chemistry of the photoprimers, the material, the application and the market, so if you have any question, please feel free to uh, send them at webinars at bsf3dps.com. And thank you for watching and hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.